eventually when people started to see wrestling as a, a spectator sport it was the Lancashire Catchers Catch Cam which was seen as much more exciting to watch and you know it, it leads us up to sort of 17th 18th century when in this area I mean the big industry was coal mining and the coal miners took on carried this sport on and when when the as a spectator sport you know there was money up for grabs it became a way out of the the coal mines And amateurs, all you got was certificates if you won at a Lancashire Championship. As our lads turned pro, they didn't come to our club. They went to Riley's because there was nowhere teaching pro wrestling. Button. And it was at the time when there was no, no, no uh, television on wrestling. And I decided to go over and it was a tremendous lot more money. They used to wrestle straight for money and it's the same as any other sort of gambling. Sooner or later, somebody comes up and thinks of how to make a lot more money. You got fellows in villages who had a match with a fellow at another village and the lot of people would be putting their rent money on them and they suddenly thought, right, they'd get one of their mates to back the other fellow and take a dive. That's where Skullduggery came into wrestling. That's where it started off. The, one of the reasons the fellow who trained us, Billy Riley, had such a good name in Wigan, that everybody who backed him knew that the rent money was on a trier. He never took a dab in his life. There are a lot of people out there who think wrestling's always been a work, and I absolutely don't agree with that. To say wrestling has always been a work is to say there was never a time where there were people, men, who cared more about who they were, their pride, and whether or not they could whip another person on the wrestling map. Uh, then they cared about conning somebody or money.